Oh, okay. All righty, we're going to sing out of the Bible today. <laughs> we're going to sing Psalm 25. Praise God. Just kind of an old psalm that we've known for years. <clears throat> Let's see, where do we start? Unto thee, O Lord. Okay, I got you. You ready? Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Oh, my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me show me thy ways teach me thy path show me thy ways teach me thy path oh my god i trust in thee let me not be ashamed let not my enemies triumph over me the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him oh my God I trust in thee Ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me. Verse 20. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Oh, my God, I trust in thee. Shame, let not my enemies triumph over me. Amen. That was that was the first verse, the fourth verse, the fourteenth verse, and the twentieth verse. So I know some of you were looking in your Bible to see if you could follow along with us on that one. And uh, praise God, just scripture today. All right, praise the Lord. Did you get this? There we go. During the 60s and 70s, we sung a lot of courses in the churches that were right out of the Bible. A whole bunch of them. Glory. Hallelujah. First time I've heard one in a little bit. Do you have some prayer requests, David? Yes, we do. This morning, Kelly says that they need a miracle so I can continue doing God's work. Uh, then we have another one. Please pray for my grandson, Dominic, and also pray for his problem with reading. Little John from Liberia says, please continue to keep us in your prayers. We have many coming this week. David from the Ivory Coast said, please continue to keep us held up in your prayers. Jimmy from Fiji Island says, please pray for those coming this Sunday for the video services. And Roberto from Spain says, we have 18 coming along with our church. Some have cancer, MS, and RA. Amen. Praise God. Aren't you glad God can take care of that? Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. I'll tell you. I've been titled this today, a New Testament church. You know, sometimes the church does not realize the importance of the church, of who we really are. Glory. Hallelujah. There, there is a, a truth there that it seems like the church is forgetting about. And we read about it in Acts, the second chapter, you know, with verse 38 on. And how they 
went to receive the promise of the Father. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They were all in one accord. And that word there talking about being filled <coughs> excuse me, with power, dunamis, it means special, miracle, working, power, ability, might, and strength. Glory. Let me read that again. It means power, special, miracle, working, power, ability, might, and strength. These were clearly the signs of a true New Testament church. Glory. It, it, it started right there. It wasn't there before because the Old Testament did not have the power or the anointing or the ability or the supernatural working gifts like the New Testament church. It was a special church. It was promised way back in, in Psalms 102, verse 18. When the Holy Spirit says they'll be created. Did you ever stop to realize we weren't created? We had no understanding on the new creation until we got into the Pauline epistles. And the Apostle Paul tells us about that. We weren't just born again. Yeah, we were that too. You know, we, we weren't just saved. No, we were created. Created very clearly, very plainly there. So the New Testament church had the power, it had the healings, it had the miracles, it had the deliverance, it had the salvation, it had the operation of the nine gifts. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, God said that he created us for himself. Did you get that? Isn't that beautiful? He created us for himself. It wasn't like Adam and Eve. He created Adam and Eve for himself because he wanted a family. And from Adam and Eve, everybody has come about throughout all the generations. But there come another time that God said, I, I'm going to create a people. They're going to be created just for me. Just for me. Sons and daughters of Almighty God. Sons and daughters with the ability, with the power to bring forth miracles, signs, and wonders. Pentecost marked the introduction of the New Testament church. Had a new covenant. The old covenant was fulfilled, done away with. The old covenant was signed and sealed in the blood of animals, you remember? The new covenant is signed and sealed in the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Oh, I'll tell you, what a joy. What a joy it is to realize who we are and what we've been created for. Even though these are the last days, even though we're, we're headed there very fastly to the rapture, it's time we wake up and know who we are. Glory. The New Testament church lived in the power of the Spirit, having the inner power to live the life that pleased God, to act like Jesus. Glory. You know, we were first called Christ I am in the New Testament. Glory. Paul tells us all about that. And we took that word Christ I am and made the word Christians. Christians. So a Christian is somebody that acts like Jesus Christ, walks like Jesus Christ, talks like Jesus Christ. That when the world sees us, they don't see us, they see Jesus Christ. Ezekiel 36, verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. That's us. That's us. Glory. You know, this is a prophecy. Ezekiel was prophesying concerning the New Testament church. Glory. Hallelujah. 
You know, Moses ratified the Old Testament with the blood of animals, like I said before. Jesus ratified it with the new, in the New Testament with his own blood. His blood is the signature that life in the power of the Spirit is now available to everybody who will receive it. I mean, the Bible's clear. Who will receive it? That means you haven't got it unless you received it. Glory, that's not talking about salvation. I'm not talking about salvation. Glory, hallelujah. Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power after, not before, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. You know, we've never fulfilled that. You say, sure we have. We're going out throughout all the world. We forgot Jerusalem. That's why America's in the shape that it's in today. We forgot Jerusalem. We forgot to build a solid foundation here. We forgot to get everybody here saved. Everybody here turned around. We were in such a big hurry to get overseas and do a work there, we forgot here. And even today, we're in such a hurry to prove to the world we love them or whatever, we're doing everything for everybody else but here. All the jobs aren't here no more. People are coming in. We don't even have jobs for people. We keep forgetting Jerusalem, or we could say America. We keep forgetting America. We haven't given the gospel to America, hallelujah, like we should have. Glory. Let me get... <laughs> Leviticus 14 tells of the cleansing of the leopard. Leprosy is a type of sin. The blood of the trespass offering was applied to the right ear, right thumb, right big toe. Then the oil was applied on top of the blood. This is a symbol of how the blood prepares us for the anointing. Now did you get that? Or did you miss it? You sure you got it? You sure now? Listen. The blood was applied to the right ear, the right thumb, and the right big toe. Then, then, then the oil was applied. In other words, salvation had to come first. The cleansing of the blood had to come first before you could receive the Holy Ghost. It didn't come with it. I mean, you can go way back and prove this all the way through the Bible. You know, I sometimes wonder how much it grieves the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit when we stop short of what we could be or what we are or what has been done for us, what has been given to us. Glory. I, I seen a young boy when I was in the hospital and I thought, boy, what a struggle is he's going through. And I kept sharing with them, but they were diehard Baptists. Uh, so I didn't know how much I was reaching through to them. Oh, they knew their word. But they didn't know Jesus, the author of the word. They didn't know him. The boy was born deaf, went to school learned sign language, learned to read lips, was doing excellent, and bang, he lost a sight in one eye. Now the other sight, almost gone, has tunnel vision. I thought, boy, how hard that must be. And they said, there's absolutely nothing that doctors can do. I said, yes, there is a doctor that can help. And they said, who? I said, Jesus. And they said, well, we have our religion. I wasn't talking religion. I was talking the answer. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Glory. I did get to talk with them more and pray with them more, but glory. Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endured with power from on high. Endured to furnish 
or provide with a gift, talent, or good quality that cannot come any other way. You can even look it up at Webster and it'll tell you that. It can only come one way from the Father. It wasn't given by Jesus. Jesus said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. It was God, Almighty God, that gave us this precious gift. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, 17 through 20. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein it is excess. But be filled with the Spirit. Glory. You see, this was all to be filled with the Spirit. Yes, they looked like they were drunk. They acted like they were drunk. They were all speaking in languages that some could understand and others couldn't understand. Glory. Why? Because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The will of God is for you to be filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. Empowered by the Spirit. The will of God is actually that we become the channels through which His Spirit flows through to meet every need that's out there. You know, when we're filled with the Holy Ghost, when we're filled with the Spirit, we can operate in all nine gifts. Glory. And those nine gifts, if you study them, will meet every need that anybody would ever have. Wisdom, knowledge, miracles, healing, power, glory. All comes through the Word. And who's the Word? Jesus. Boy, I got quiet. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And all things that were created were created by Him, and nothing was created that was not created by Him. Read it. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. He gave to us the power to become sons and daughters. Glory. Who? Almighty God. But we had to come through the blood of Jesus Christ. We had to receive the gift that was given to us. And all of us have done that, I believe. We can become all that God wants us to become. That we can become ministers of that anointing. You know, the Bible is very clear on that. We have to be ministers of that anointing. In other words, we can't just be ministers, especially if we're not baptized in the Holy Ghost. I know some people think, boy, you get real hard on that. No, I don't. I want to tell you what the Bible says. I didn't write the book. I, I'm not that much of a genius. I'm just an average person. I don't, I don't have the wisdom and the knowledge. I don't have the anointing and the ability to write the Bible. That was written by the Holy Spirit. You know, he moved upon men of old, the Bible says, and they penned the things that the Spirit gave to them. You get into the four Gospels, the only thing the four Gospels talk about is the four Gospels. I mean, they knew these other things because they didn't write the book for at least 40 years after Jesus departed. At least 40 years. And yet they don't relate to anything that took place after his death through those 40 years. That they waited on until Acts. And from Acts on, we find out what took place. What took place? All right. And Paul received revelation knowledge that none of the disciples had seen, not even heard about. And he explained it to it. We find that in Acts right off the bat. 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, verses 5 through 6. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. We're nobodies. I have no problem with that. 
How many have no problem that you're a nobody? <laughs> Glory. That's good. But, but, our sufficiency is of God. Did you hear that? Whew. That means we go to the top of the class. We go to the top of the world. Our sufficiency is of God. We're empowered by Him. We, get, we receive wisdom. We receive knowledge. We receive everything from God. Glory. Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not another testament. Not the Old Testament. That doesn't mean you can't preach out of the Old. It's not saying that. We're New Testament. We're New Testament. We received the Holy Ghost. Not of the letter. Not of the letter. But of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. Zoe, the God kind of life. John 7, 37 and 38. In the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scriptures has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's talking about every one of us that's baptized in the Holy Ghost. Out of our bellies flow rivers of living water. Sharon was telling me how upset she got with the devil this week, and she really went to war with him. Well, that river was flowing out of there then. I'll tell you that river had to be flowing. Glory. That's why he gave us this. That we could minister to others. That we could reach out to others. That we could meet the needs that others have. In Ezekiel 37, 7 through 10, we find the picture of the New Testament church. This is the Old Testament. We find the picture of the New Testament church. What was the Old Testament church? Like a lot of our churches today, they were dead. They were dead. Dead. Glory. Oh, they might see a healing or a miracle now and then. Glory. Listen to what's said. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together. Bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh came up, up upon them. And the skins covered them above. And there was no breath in them. Then he said to, unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come forth from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon them slain, that they may live. So I prophesy as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet. An exceeding great army. That's us. That's us. Glory. Oh, I'll tell you. We might have been dead. That's what the Bible says. We're dead in sins and trespasses. But life came. Jesus came. He came into our life. And then we realized we could be filled with the Holy Ghost. Wow. I don't know if there's that excitement today. I tried for 13 years. I wanted it. I wanted it. Glory. And it seemed like the church had lost something for some reason. I wasn't getting it. And I tried to tell you everything, and it was 13 years later that God spoke to me and said, if you want it, go with Brother Ron. Wherever he goes, you go, and I'll baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And I went, and I got it. I, they said a light come right down through the building, hit me around the top of the head. They all saw it. And I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you I did. And from that day, things began to change. I read my Bible through three times in one year. Three times in one year. And the 13 years before that, I never read it through once. Not once. Things began to change. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Everything from natural standpoint may be perfect, but from God's perspective, it is dead until the Spirit has come upon and brought life to it. Brought life to it. Glory. Ezekiel was operating in a New Testament anointing. He was bringing the life of God to dead bones. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The great need of this hour. You know, it was the last outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We've said that over and over and over. A new visitation with power, with anointing. Not, not like they had down there that was fake, where they had the shakes. And they couldn't stop the shakes until somebody cast the demons out of them. Glory. Man tries everything to imitate the real. But what we need is the real. The church needs to revisit Jerusalem. You say, why? Because that was a place of divine desperation and the divine dispensing of the Holy Spirit. Are we desperate enough? You say, I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. That's good. But are you desperate enough to get another refilling? Are you desperate enough to stay on your knees until you get everything that God has for you? You know, we used to call that praying through. Glory. Are you dependent enough upon the power of God and realize you can't do it alone? I'm nothing without him. Glory. I like a couple of weeks ago I preached to you and told you how the apostle said, Lord, if you don't go with me, I'm not going. I don't want to go without him. Hallelujah. Matthew 3, 11 through 12. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he'll thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat unto the grinder. But he will burn up the chaff with an unquenchable fire. That's revival. That's revival. Did you know that? That, that? That's revival. You know, we've been praying for a revival. We've been asking for a revival. We've been seeking God for a revival. That's revival. That's revival. Check it back through. Check it through the church history. That's revival. That's revival. Glory. Hallelujah. And some of the deadest churches are the ones that started the revival way back then. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll tell you, if we want the New Testament power, we must receive the New Testament power. If we want it to flow in our lives, we've got to have a New Testament anointing. And that only comes by and through the Holy Ghost. A spirit-filled life, filled to overflowing, special miracles, healings, working, ability, powerful. Power. You know, we see it on the video. And, and most of the time we hear people say, why, why isn't it happening here? Apparently we aren't as hungry as they are. Serious. I mean, we're hungry enough, we'll get it. I mean, when God told me where I was going to get it, I was trying like mad to catch up with Brother Ron. He was trying to catch up with me. I had absolutely no idea where he was going. And finally, we got together, and we went to a full gospel business, businessman meeting in Seattle. Dr. Jarman, Jarmer, a spirit. He used to be the head of the Presbyterian Church. He got baptized the Holy Ghost and they thought he went crazy and they kicked him out. He was the speaker. <laughs> Glory. Don't ask me what he preached. I have no idea. You see, how come? Well, I wasn't there for that. I'm trying to show you something important. I wasn't there for that. What was I there for? 
He get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I would sit there and pray, Lord, just shut his mouth. You know, just, just shut him up, Lord, please. I want the altar call. I want to go. And then when we went, he started laying hands on people. And the way that he was proceeding to give them the Holy Ghost. And our full gospel church here, we had been taught that was of the devil. And I said, Lord, this is not of you. The Lord said, what did I tell you? And you said, if I'd come, I'd get it. And he said, don't worry about what they're doing then. What did you come for? I said, I come to get it. He said, then get it. And I said, yes, I'm going to get it. And I got it. You see, I could have wrestled with theology. I could have done all that. I used to do that. I used to say there's no way that a Christian could be demon-possessed. Then I saw it eyeball to eyeball. And I said, Lord, I don't understand this. He says, your theology. Do you see it? I said, yes, I see it. Then he says, what's your responsibility? I said, cast it out. He said, then cast it out. Stop looking at it. Cast it out. Glory. I had to learn some things the hard way. I guess I was too stubborn to learn it the easy way. All right. I remember the night that Satan himself come into my bedroom, set, put one knee on this arm, one knee on this arm, and it was choking me to death. This wasn't just a dream. I mean, this is reality. And I was pleading the blood. And I was pleading the blood. And the more I pleaded the blood, the harder he choked. I couldn't kick my wife next to me to wake her up for help. I needed help. I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, what did I tell you to do? I said, you mean in your name? And that was it. It was gone just like that. He said, you shall cast out demons in my name. You haven't got to wrestle with them. You haven't got to fight with them. You've got to know what the Word of God says. And it was that simple. It was that easy. It left just like that. I told the dean of our college about it. He said, yes. He said, you're going to find out very soon now that even the devils in hell know your name. And I've had them tell me that. We know who you are. I said, I don't care if you know who I am. In the name of Jesus, you're coming out. It's not me. It's the power that flows through. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus had it. The disciples had it. But you know they got filled every time they went to church? Read it in Acts. Read it. Read it. They were continually filled to overflowing. And we read... And we read the results of that. Got to keep my tongue on tongue here. Glory. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus is in our house today. He's here. Whether you see him, whether you sense him, whether you believe it or not, he's here. The Bible says where any two of you, two of you or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in your midst. How many are gathered here in his name. Look at that. Look at that. All over. All over. That tells me Jesus is here. You know, we haven't got to run to Africa or Timbuktu or down the street or someplace else. Jesus is here. He's right here. I mean, we're that church they say that's crazy. We're that church they say that does all kinds of strange things. We're that church they say stay away from. Why? Because Jesus is here. And when Jesus shows up, all kinds of things happen. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't plan them. We don't draw up a blueprint. I don't tell Gwen, make sure you sing just these worship songs and these only. Glory. When I wasn't here, the Spirit still moved, didn't it? That's because Jesus was here. We allow Him to move. We allow the Holy Ghost to move. We allow the gifts to move. I don't want a service without the gifts. I don't want one. Why? Because that's not a New Testament church. I don't care how big they get. 
If they haven't got the signs and wonders, if they haven't got the things that Jesus said they'd have, they're not a New Testament church. They're dead. They're dead. And Jesus came to fulfill the Old Testament, that we could have the New Testament. Glory. Hallelujah. I sat in my room 5 o'clock in the morning with a curtain half drawn, hiding back in the chair, praying when the nurse come in. She just froze. And I stopped praying because I, I, I pray out loud when I pray <laughs> softly. She said, are you okay? I said, yes, ma'am. I couldn't be any better. <laughs> couldn't be a bit better. Glory. I wanted to go home. Glory, I was ready to go home. Not to heaven. I want to go there too. But I want to go to the rapture. I shared that with one, one, one man today. He's going to come and look at our website. A Muslim, a Mormon. He wants a copy of my book of Daniel. Glory. I said, I'll give it to you. I told Randy, now I've got to go home and read it. Make sure I haven't said anything bad about them. Because I don't want to get him up say, uh, uh, uptight. I want to get him saved. I mean, if I had said anything, it would have been the truth. But I didn't want that. <coughs> I just wanted whatever God wanted. Hallelujah. Whatever God wanted. I, I read the fifth chapter of the book of, Revel of Daniel every day. That I was almost... I forget how many days, Saturday to Saturday at 7, and then there was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know. I'm here now anyway. <laughs> Glory. Every day. Because I knew that was the next chapter I was writing on, and I wanted to get everything that God had. I checked every reference. I didn't have my computer to go on and check even further. I didn't have my study Bible with me. I had my reading Bible tell you, it was rich. It was rich. I went to bed at 11 o'clock and got up for 35 o'clock, just like home. Lady said, you're always up early. I said, I'm up early at home. I've been up early every day since. I asked my wife. Glory. I said, I found out that four or five hours is all I need. Well, you should have more. I said, I don't want to sleep my life away. There's too many things happening. There, there's too much going on. I want it all. I don't want to miss it. Glory. I don't want to lay around and sleep my wife, life away. Glory. But you know, now is the time God was telling me. Now is the time. Now is the time. He said, I've been ready. But my church hasn't been ready. My church hasn't. Now was the time. I, I, I've been ready. I've heard you. I've heard you crying out. I've been ready. I've been ready. But my church hasn't been ready. They're ready for another Florida with the fake shakes and all that stuff. But they're not ready for a real, old-fashioned, Holy Ghost revival with miracle signs and wonders. Glory. Hallelujah. And you know what excites me the most when I think about all that? And I'm not saying it boasting, and I'm not saying it bragging, but when I was traveling, they said anywhere from 90 to 98% of everybody that came received a miracle or healing. The only ones that didn't receive were those that didn't come up front. This time I'm expecting to see the 100%. I'm expecting to see the 100%. Because Jesus is going to be here. The Holy Ghost is going to be here. And they're going to be three times as powerful as they were before. Because that's a characteristic of the last outpouring. And I want to see it. I want to be in it. I want to enjoy it. Glory. And I don't care if it starts at 5 o'clock in the morning and doesn't end until 5 o'clock the next morning. I want it. And I'm ready. 
and I'm ready. I want to be a New Testament church. Father, right now in Jesus' name, we just speak a miracle, a healing, a deliverance to all those people, Father, that have wrote, they've asked, they're searching, and I know you're giving it to them right now. The only thing I wasn't shocked of has got to be out there someplace. As Randy cried out, somebody to be raised from the dead. I heard that, Father, and I, I felt my spirit jump within me. And therefore, I know somewhere it's happened. And, Father, I'm looking forward to hearing that, that again somebody was raised from the dead. Like that time, Father, in the morgue, you remember, when you had our, our, our youth stream playing there, and they were doing an autopsy, and let death was there, and life, life came into them. I'm looking for that again. And, Father, I thank you for that, and I praise you for that. Now, Father, just have your will, have your way. Meet every need that's out there in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. If you want prayer for anything at all, I'm here.